the perfect storm for the price of a barrel of crude to go up is brewing. The markets are wrong about oil. They, the, the, you have the media, I mean, in China, they control the media. The CCP controls the media. They cannot say anything unless the dictators agree with it. There was a time that America was a free press. Those days are over. You get crucified if you're honest. You get called a conspiracy theorist or what have you. And we learned this during the pandemic. Now, look what happened during the pandemic. They said that the price of a barrel of crude was going to fall to nothing. The demand for oil was going to drop by 30 million barrels a day, but it really only dropped by 10 million. How did they get it so wrong? Because there was absolutely no brain cells involved in what these people were repeating. They were just doing as they told and they brought people on that agreed with them. But at the end of the day, someone else was pulling the strings. Here's the thing. The most powerful entity in the world is the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve loses power when oil prices are $150 a barrel. They lose power when you have a barrel of oil that's eroding the U.S. economy and eroding the rest of the world's economy. So they use the media to control the price of a barrel of oil. Now, the media, it keeps talking about how Europe and America is going to reduce their carbon footprint. But they talk, they, they, but they speak as if it's the whole world following suit. That's simply not true. Okay. Now, if you look at the demand for oil, now this is oil consumption in the United States from 1998 to 2021. Now, if you look at 1998 demand, we're at 18.9 million barrel a day demand. And then in 2005, we peaked at 20.8 million barrels a day. And then it fluctuated. Okay. So if you look at America, Europe has a similar story. We already peaked in demand back in the mid 2000s. We're not increasing demand. Okay. We're not even decreasing demand. Okay. Now everyone's like, well, Sean, you know, electric cars are replacing gasoline cars and we have all these wind turbines and all these solar panel, uh, solar power panels being installed. Okay. That's true. Is gasoline demand decreasing? No, it's not. In addition to that, industrial demand is increasing. Plastic demand is increasing. Okay. But let's just say that Europe and America, uh, our demand is not going to go up our, and, our, and our demand is not going to go down. Okay. We'll go back to the time when oil demand was 80 million barrels a day. Well, we had already peaked. The U.S. has already peaked in demand. So where did that other 20 million barrel a day demand come from? From the emerging markets. There's another 6 billion people out there that could care less about what Europe and America is doing. In addition to that, they are using some of these billions of people are using as much electricity as we use with one refrigerator. They want to be America. They want to be Europe. I mean, these guys are on TikTok. They're on uh, uh, social media. They're on the internet. They're watching YouTube. And they're like, man, we want to have their lives. And so as, as, as the industrial revolution exploded here in the US, you're starting to see an industrial revolution in other countries at a much slower pace. But the demand for oil in these emerging markets is going to increase. OK, so don't believe what the media is telling you. The demand for oil is increasing. I mean, in, in addition to that, listen, you got to understand something. Oil is a de depreciating asset. An oil well from day one is not going to produce the same amount in day 365 at the end of the year. It reduces every year. Globally, we lose 10% of oil production. So right now we're producing about 100 million barrels a day. Well, each year we're losing 10 million barrels a day. So if nobody developed any more, next year we would be producing 90 million barrels a day. And then the year after that, we'll be at about 80 million. And the year after that, we'll be at 70 million. And in 10 years, we'll be at zero. Okay. So 
Although we've been consistent with about 100 million barrel a day output, we have been increasing substantially with oil development, even though it doesn't look like it. Okay. And so if you look at now, here's the thing over the last 10 years, shale, the US shale revolution is the only country in the world that has increased oil output. Over the last decade, we've been the only country that have increased oil output. But here's the problem with that. We came and saved the day because while oil demand in the emerging markets increased, we saved the day by increasing our oil output. Otherwise, if we didn't have a shell revolution all, and we were stuck in, with, with uh, fundamental oil developments that worked in the 1920s before we had fracking, we'd only still be at about five or six million barrel a day output. Okay. And today we're at about 12 million because of shale. But if we didn't increase our output by six, seven million barrels a day, and, and oil demand increased by 20 million barrels a day, oil prices would be around $150 a barrel today. Okay. And so we saved the world by having a shell revolution. Okay. But here's the thing those tier one assets are gone. Now we're having to tap into tier two and tier three assets. In addition to that, on average globally, we lose 10%. There's a 10% decline in oil. Uh, output due to depreciation. But in shale, in America, if you take shale and, 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 and also our conventional oil, we lose 30% a year. Okay. And so we can't keep up with the depreciation, the, the, the decline of oil. We cannot keep up with it. And so today we're producing 100 million barrels a day. Next year, we might be at 99.5. All the while, the demand for oil is increasing because of these emerging markets. There's no way that we can find enough oil to meet with global demand. Okay. And so that's why the media is working overtime to try to get the world to believe that green energy is replacing oil and putting a lot of negative sentiment towards oil. And this is the most overly sold recession the world has ever heard about. The most overly sold recession, because you gotta think about it. We are not in a recession. You believe we're in a recession, but we're not, okay? No analyst has ever said, hey, we're in the recession. Right now, here we are. Okay. But you look at back in 2009, January of 2009, it was the worst financial crisis the world has ever seen. And the price of a barrel of crude dropped down to $60 per a barrel. We are at $70 per a barrel today. The price of a barrel of crude, WTI, West Texas Intermediate, is 70. We are only $10 shy for being priced in the worst financial crisis the world has ever seen. Oil is being priced in recessionary prices, all the while tech stocks are priced in a booming market. And I'll tell you why. Because oil, high oil prices, cause the Federal Reserve to lose power. Because it, it costs more dollars to buy more oil, which causes recession, which reduces the power of the dollar. So instead of trying to reduce the price of a barrel of crude with a drill bit like you did in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. Now they're using the market. And so that's no different than what China does. They, con they control the media. Well, there was a time that America had a free press. That's game over, guys. Okay, there are a few that still are honest, but uh, we, we see what happens when, when you're honest. If you're honest on Twitter, uh, if you're honest on YouTube, if you're honest on uh, any uh, news outlet, uh, you get demonetized, you get shut down. Even on my small oil YouTube channel here, uh, when I talk about the truth, uh, sometimes I've had videos get taken down. I've had videos that don't get any views. And it just makes absolutely no sense where a previous video gets uh, 10 times the viewers, uh, viewership. And so bottom line, we, we live in a world where we can't be honest I was, I was just talking to a doctor the other day. I was at a, as a, I was at a baby shower 
And he said, there are things that are happening that I, that, that I cannot, uh, go public about. I just can't. And so that's the world we live in guys. And so here's the thing in this, uh, during this time of everybody is in fear of recession, the price of a barrel of crude is low right now. It's, it is not a favorable place to be for the shale companies. Because I mean, if it, if it wasn't profitable during the times uh, when, when oil prices were high and they were in tier one assets and they had the banks to back them, now they don't have the banks to back them. They're in tier two, tier three assets and we're at $70 oil. And $70 oil is a new $50. It, it, it's the new $50 oil. Because the price of materials is much higher, it costs more to develop, okay? Costs more to, to borrow money. And so at the end of the day, oil prices are really $50 a barrel, which during the worst in during the worst financial crisis the world has seen, oil prices drop down to 60. Go figure, okay? And so bottom line, the media is saying Shell is going to save the day. No, they are not. The media is saying that, we're going to see a decline in the demand for oil. No, we're not. There's 6 billion other people that say otherwise. In addition, every American that I talk to is, is tired of, of that woke agenda crap being shoved down their throat. I talk to guys all the time that could very easily afford a Tesla that said, I'm never going to buy a Tesla. I mean, because if I buy a Tesla, they have the ability to shut it off. I'm perfectly fine with my diesel truck because at the end of the day, they can't just turn that thing off and I could drive wherever I want. They don't want to be controlled. They don't want a dictator to tell them when they can drive and when, they, when they're allowed to use energy. At the end of the day, fossil fuels represents freedom where green energy represents control and lies and propaganda. Okay. And so we don't trust it. I don't trust, I don't trust green energy at all. In addition to not trusting it, there's no way that you can replace. We've been building this world for the last 200 years on fossil fuels. You can't just replace it overnight. You can't replace it in 30 years. You can't replace all of our infrastructure to get prepared for an uh, electrical grid to charge every single electric car out there. And replace oil. It's impossible. Yet they, they say that it's happening and it's going to happen. You can't get, you got 6 billion people that are not in agreement that they're just looking to survive. They just want to take care of their family. What's the, what's the cheapest energy out there? It's fossil fuels. It's not green energy. Try, try living in another country where you can't afford a solar power panel. You can't afford a Tesla. In fact, you don't even have access to those things, but you have access to, to, to diesel. You have access to gasoline. You have access to uh, fossil fuels, okay? And so their demand is increasing. As we become a global empire, as you're, we're connecting industries together, as, as traveling uh, becomes more widely available for these other countries, as the internet has become has connected the whole world, it's causing them to industrialize just like Europe, just like America. Okay. So they're catching up, guys. And so here's the fear. The rest, the 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 people, the powers that be are shaking in their boots because they know that we're not going to have enough energy for this growing energy demand. Even if energy demand did not increase, let's say it stayed where it was. There's not enough major oil field discoveries to support it. And so that's why they're pushing this whole green energy initiative. But they're lying to us. Just like Al Gore, he said, you know, the, the, uh, the ice caps are going to melt by such and such date. Well, it didn't happen. And he's, he looks like an idiot. Well, everyone forgot it. Very few people remember it. I remember it. Very few people are paying attention. They're, they're, they're overwhelmed with providing for their families and, 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 and succeeding. I'm paying attention. I'm listening to what these guys, you know, these, these promises during the Democratic primary, the promises by Bernie and, and, and by uh, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, all the uh, anti 
rhetoric of oil and gas and everything they said about oil, everything they said about green energy, nothing they said happened, nothing they said was true. We're not even, we, we haven't even come close to that. At the end of the day, the demand for oil is real. The demand for oil is growing and the production of oil and gas is decreasing. This, this environment that we're in for oil is very negative. It's, it's, there's so much negative sentiment towards oil. These guys in suits and ties that control the price of crude are negative about oil. In addition to that, there's agendas at play here where the largest investment capital, whether it was uh, pension funds, are not investing in oil because of the agenda, because of the ESG regulations. And, and it's getting harder to develop. It's getting harder to get permits. I know this for a fact. I'm involved in getting permits in, in, in uh, uh, different parts of the US. And I'm telling you, they are putting more stipulations, more stringent uh, uh, things in place to make it even more difficult to develop oil and gas. And it's more expensive to produce a barrel of oil. There, It's more expensive to get capital to develop oil and gas. And so there's no way we're going to be able to keep up with tomorrow's demand. There's no way we are going to be able to turn this thing around. And so we're in a perfect storm for the price of a barrel of crude hit levels we've never seen. But even at $70 a barrel, in, in my industry, I'm a smaller, uh, a small piece of the pie. And we have uh, conventional oil developments where it's highly profitable. Even if oil prices drop down to $45, $50 a barrel, it's still extremely profitable as where these big shell plays that are spending millions and millions of dollars on a frack, it's not profitable. And if they develop a well today and oil prices go down to uh, even lower, because everyone's afraid of a recession, uh, they're just going to lose their butts. Because so that's why they're reeling in. That's why they're getting rid of all these rigs. It's a crazy world we live in, guys. But I'm telling you right now, if you really believe that oil prices are going to drop even lower, even though we've been priced in recession, uh, it's been priced based upon uh, inflation and recession and all the issues already. How much lower can we go? And if the price of a barrel of crude does drop down to $60 oil during the worst financial crisis, that's what we hit. Even if it does drop down to $60 a barrel, it's historically proven. It's always a short time, but it's all it's going to do is exasperate the situation we're in, reduce the amount of capital being deployed in oil and gas, reduce the amount of oil wells being drilled. And we here we are in this vicious cycle of an eight-year underinvestment cycle. All right, guys, I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you're interested in learning more about uh, oil and gas and, uh, and, and what have you, go on my description below, click on the link, fill out my form. Love to chat with you. Thanks, guys.